Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our chapter chat, our monthly talk about books with Miss Janine and myself, and she'll introduce herself, and then I'll introduce me. All right, I'm Janine from the Mark Twain Library. Uh, welcome to our chapter chat. Um, we'll be highlighting books from our elementary and middle school collections, and this will be airing the second Wednesday of every month. And I'm Miss Pam from the Main Library, and I guess we're ready to go. Yeah. So this month, we will each talk about five new books that have been published within the last three months. Since October and Halloween is at the uh, since it's October and Halloween is at the end of the month, we thought we would at least mention a, a new book or two that might be more of a scary tale or mystery. All right, so let's go ahead and begin, and we'll start with Pam. Oh. <laughs> All right, thanks, Janine. Okay, this is our first book. My first book. This is called Fabio, the world's greatest flamingo detective. Mystery on the Ostrich Express, and this is by Laura James, illustrated by Emily Fox. Fabio and his assistant, Gilbert Giraffe, are out to capture a jewel thief, even though they're supposed to be on vacation, but there are sacrifices to make when you're a famous detective. There are plenty of illustrations in addition to a lot of pink. I'll show you the pages. There's some bright pink and Where's an orange one? Pink and, and a lot of orange and different colors. So this is a very vivid, colorful read. Just as enjoyable. There's a number first. There's a first book in the series, and it's a lot of fun. It's a beginning chapter book, and you can challenge yourself to solve the mystery before Fabio does. And that is Mystery on the Ostrich Express. Very cool, very cool. <laughs> so my first one that I wanted to highlight was this book, what? Scary Stories for Young Foxes. As you can see, you understand why I chose this. So I actually listened to this book and it was amazing. Uh, it's basically about, it's told uh, first, you're set up in the story um, these young foxes actually want to go to a storyteller. They want to hear a story that will turn their entire tales white. So I guess it's one of those things where if you see a fox with a white tail, that means they actually sat through the entire story and listened to it. Um, many, of, <laughs> many of the little fox, the kits, there's little kits that actually go to the storyteller and they there's seven of them, I believe. I think, yeah, seven of them. And each of them, obviously, they, are, they range in age. But the oldest is actually the bravest. And even the beta, the alpha and the beta, you know, they're all really brave. But then they find out that you can, they can't all really sit through the entire story because it's so bone chilling. So it's really good. It's actually, um, I... I was really worried throughout the entire book about what was going to happen to these two foxes. And it was pretty, pretty interesting story because you actually get to see them fight for, like actually try to survive and fight um, all the different challenges that actually they actually encounter in the woods, including humans. So it's pretty interesting. I really enjoyed it. And they have some pretty scary illustrations inside too. Oh. Yeah. So it's all black and white. And it's pretty cool because it's like a sketch art, but it's really, really cool. I love it. It's all the, de the details. It was really good. So, but yeah. And uh, it also is a Newberry Honor book as well. So it, it's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Sounded too scary to me. I, I haven't been able to read it yet. So I, I guess my tail would not turn white. Yeah. <laughs> My next book is called Iggy Peck and the Mysterious Mansion by Andrea Beatty, illustrations by David Roberts. And this is part of the Questionnaires series, but have you ever been to a real haunted house? Iggy Peck thinks he has. During a storm, he shelters at the mysterious mansion that has a rumor that it's haunted. 
but he's an architect, so he's fascinated because there's lots of architectural styles in this house. It's like they did some, and then they added some, and then they did more and more. So it's it's really exciting to him. But it's also till, still spooky, especially in a storm. Luckily for him, his friend Ada Twist and her great aunt Bernice show up to give him a ride home. She has actually been given the house by the former owner because he wanted to give it to someone who loved their town, which is Blue River Creek, and ex respected the history of it. And she owns a, a store where she sells artifacts from the town's history. So the, she was the perfect choice. But when they go back the next day, the porch boards start moving like piano keys up and down and up and down. And they begin to wonder, is this house really haunted? And also when they go in, there's no furniture. And she needs the furniture in order to open it to the public. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it's up to Iggy and his friends to use their technology and their engineering skills and their curiosity to find out, is the house really haunted? And where is that furniture? And so the questionnaires, they inspire us to ask our own questions and follow our own unique interests. So this is Iggy Peck and the Mysterious Mansion. Very cool, very cool. <laughs> I really want furniture in my own house, so I can't imagine if you don't have furniture there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then having to hunt for it like a scavenger hunt. I know. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so my next one is another Newberry Honor book as well. Mm -hmm. This one is called Other Words for Home. This is actually in our middle school collection. We just received this in August. So it's a very interesting story. This is Jude that you see on the cover. She's actually from the war torn country, Syria. And it is so heartbreaking that she has to leave her beloved father and older brother it, and she has to leave the country and leave them behind unfortunately and move to america in cincinnati um so she's on not just a life-changing uh, environment but she's also learning about all these different things that the american movies that she adored um, in the past, they really did not prepare her for the, the current American uh, society. And so she's learning terms like Middle Eastern, um, like a, new identities that she's discovering about herself or what other people say about her or think of her. So it's very interesting. She's also, um, but she is trying her hardest to make new friends, trying to become accustomed to American uh, culture and also just trying to find herself and figure out what her true identity really is. Um, it's a great, great story. It is actually told in verse. So if you look inside, mm -hmm. it's more of a, um, an easier read. This is best for reluctant readers. Um, so if you're not really, really into reading and you are a little, you know, hesitant to pick up a book. This one is pretty good. Not only is it a good story, not only do you learn a lot, but it's pretty, a, a, quite a fast read. So pretty cool, huh? That's, yeah, I like those good. books in verse. Yeah, I know. And, um, and it probably gives you some real insights into what it would be like to move to a different country and leave everything behind. And that's kind of why I kind of chose it too, because I know it's not a scary tale, but we all do when moving is is already scary for anybody um even an adult even for me <laughs> yeah but imagine for a middle schooler or elementary school kid it's it's a it's very scary so especially if you're leaving your friends mm -hmm. and everything you knew exactly yeah scary mm -hmm. well this is ghost squad okay. by clarabel ortega and this is a story of Luce Lee, L-U-C-E-L-Y, Luce Lee, enjoys breakfast every morning with her cousins, her aunts, her uncles, and most especially her beloved grandmother. But if someone was to peek in their kitchen window, they would only see Luce Lee and her dad because the others are ghosts. 
and they are in firefly form when they are not in human form and they live in little jars hanging from the willow tree outside their house. Well, Lucy's dad has a ghost tour, but business is bad, so they might lose their house unless something happens. And even worse, there's something strange happening with the fireflies. They're kind of flickering in and out. So it seems like they're losing their strength. And they seem to also be reliving how they died, which is kind of creepy in some cases. But worst of all, her grandmother one day flickers out completely. So Sid, her best friend, and Lucy, they decide that they're going to use a spell and wake the spirits just to get her grandmother back. But unfortunately, they wake up the evil spirits too when they try this spell. And they have to get Sid's grandmother, who's a powerful witch. She's one of Las Brujas Moradas, which means purple witches, that used to guard their town. And she kind of kept that quiet, but now she has to use her power to help save um, the relatives and the town from the evil spirits that want to take it over. They're seeking, oh, well, I don't want to give it away. But it's a very cool book and very different, very, very different, because it seems like everyone takes ghosts for granted in this town. But the best thing is Sid and Lucy's friendship. Oh, and I just wanted to share grandma's uh, rules for dealing with evil spirits. Be prepared, respect the dead, always have a cat. And that is Ghost Squad. Oh, cute. <laughs> I like the always have a cat one. <laughs> yes. As library, as library folks, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, we would love to all have cats. <laughs> Very cool. It kind of reminds me of um, the last book, one of the books, Gallon Set, or uh, Get, uh, I think I got their, <laughs> their names mixed up, but they save the universe or something like that, or they break oh, the universe. Uh, oh, Sal and Gabby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, took, they took ghosts and spirits for granted right. also. Oh, uh, interesting. When you said like, oh, they're trying to save their grandmother their spirit and all that. And I was like, yeah. oh, it reminds me. They, I think they saw, Sal and Gabby saw her, the grandmother that passed away. And oh, his mom. Yeah. Oh, his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, I wanted to share this one, 96 Miles um, mm. by J.L. Esplin. This also is, I chose a lot of award winners. This also is an award winner. It won the G. JLG, uh, Junior Library Gu Guild, um, the gold standard right there. Um, so what it is about is about these two boys. They have a, I think, I believe they live with their father and their father has always been, you must be prepared, kind of like the, the Boy Scout motto, just always be prepared. So they would always be prepared with any disaster. They would be fully supplied um, with food and whatever emergency supplies that they have. But unfortunately, there comes a day where their dad wasn't home or he was, uh, he, I believe he was out for the day or he was busy with something so he wasn't home and there was a, a blackout in their small little community. And they actually, live 96 miles away from the nearest town where they could get any type of supplies or um, any food or anything like that. And that probably is why <laughs> they try to be disaster prepared. But unfortunately, when this blackout happens, they are robbed from of all their supplies, of all their emergency supplies. And it's just, I, don't, I just can't, I just can't imagine how terrifying that must be. You're in complete darkness and people just all of a sudden raid and loot. <laughs> so, it's horrible. Um, so they have to embark on this journey, 96 miles on foot to it through this big expansive desert. And I believe that it takes place in Nevada. And as you, most people probably know, Nevada is pretty, pretty big on deserts. <laughs> so, but this is a, 
a really good survival type story. And I know it's not a scary story, but I kind of chose this because it can be scary being out in the middle of nowhere and trying to figure out how to survive, especially if possibly your dad didn't really take you on a 96 mile journey to show you what it takes to actually survive through that. So but that, that's uh, 96 miles and it's in our children's fiction collection. So. And to have all your stuff stolen from you. Yeah, it's kind oh of like gosh. the people who would dare to loot um, the homes now as people are mm -hmm. evacuating. Yeah, it's just it's uh, insane. I know. Yeah, I know. And a lot of kids still have to read Hatchet, I think. So that's another Ooh. survival story too. Yep. So, and they have that whole series. I survived the whatever true mm -hmm. stories, but yeah. yeah, good story. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, this is Night of the Living Ted by Barry Hutchison. It's illustrated by Lee Cosgrove. And when I was reading this book, I remembered that um, when I was little, I thought that my dolls and my stuffed animals came to life at night. So I checked them in the morning to make sure that they hadn't moved. But what if I was right? Well, Lisa Marie and her stepbrother Vernon, excuse me, sorry. They're looking for a birthday present for Lisa Marie's dad. And they see one of those create a bear, stuffed bear stores. And they think, great, let's do that. And because, especially because it has a sign in the window that says free bears. And so Vernon thinks, oh, good, I can keep the money then if it's a free bear. But there's always a catch. So they get inside, they find out that, yes, they can have the free bears, but they have to buy a bear too. So, well, there goes the money. But... Lisa Maria is thrilled to have Bervis because her dad is an Elvis fan. He just loves Elvis Presley. And the other two bears, they dress in Halloween costumes. They take them home because, of course, it is Halloween. And at that night, hmm, something strange begins to happen, and the bears come to life. And bears all throughout the town are coming to life, and they're taking on the roles of their costumes. They're zombies, monsters, witches, vampires, and all these bears are just creating havoc in the town. And the lead bear, which was created by Vernon, because he just threw on any old thing, his, his bear is the leader. His name is Grizz. And so Lisa Marie has to figure out how to stop Grizz and his bear buddies from taking over the town. So... It is pretty scary. Let me see if I can find some pictures to show you. But there they are, surrounded by some of the bears. And it's a very creepy book. And there are two sequels. One is Revenge and one is Invasion. Ooh. So watch for those. <laughs> and this is Night of the Living Ted. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very cool. It's kind of... I, when you say like, oh, I wonder if my stuffed animals come to life, and you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, oh, you look goodness. a little differently at the yeah. map reading this. I know. Oh my goodness. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so the next book that I wanted to mention is called The Middler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is by Kirsty Applebaum. Um, I kind of chose this because <laughs> I know I don't, I shouldn't do it, but I kind of looked at the cover and thought mm -hmm. it seemed very interesting. Um, I'm not one to usually judge a book by its cover, but this one seemed pretty cool. So as you can see, there's a girl, and there's a wall here, which they call the boundary. And I noticed gravestones right here. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. Very interesting. So um, this book is kind of a dystopian novel, dystopian-like. And if you are a fan of The Giver by Lois Lowry, you'll definitely enjoy this book. It's about a girl who has been taught all her life to never look beyond the boundary. But as you can see, it seems like she is. And she happens to see somebody on the other side. But as she peeks through over, everything that she has been taught all her life has 
it, it's completely different from what she actually sees. They say, don't ever cross the boundary. Don't ever look beyond the boundary. And, but unfortunately, there is supposedly a quiet war. They call it the quiet war. And her older brother is recruited to actually fight in this war. But she's always saw his, her older brother as, the, as a hero. And she's always wanted to be the hero as well, like her brother. Um, but unfortunately, uh, she, she kind of has never gotten the opportunity until she's actually seeing a little girl in, which they mm. call wanderers um, but they also t teach them all their life don't ever talk to these people don't ever talk to the wanderers they are dangerous they are very very dangerous but of course as she sees over the boundary she sees the little girl who they call they would consider as an intruder and um, she's actually in hiding as you can see she's kind mm. of it looks like she's trying to search for a safe safe place a safe haven but she's in hiding and this little girl the the main girl her name is jude jude or yes jude I think so. oh no i'm sorry maggie jude was another <laughs> character she was the, the other character uh, maggie actually sees her and feels like she wants to be the hero just like her older brother and catch this intruder and of course as you can see just like the giver it's a little bit different when you actually physically see the real world so I thought this was an interesting book. I, I think this is a very interesting book. And I think anybody who's a fan of The Giver and Pax, Pax by Sarah Pennypecker. That's a really good, um, you'll really enjoy this book. Yeah, it's interesting. I love dystopian novels too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's that whole series called The Unwanted. Yes. Um, oh, where they I read separate. the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good series. Oh, I know. And I think that um Mary Han I, I think she has some uh a couple of series that kind of deal with the same thing so yeah and um, yeah Haddocks, I think also mm -hmm. Haddocks, Haddocks is another one so so yeah. is this going to be a series I didn't notice that okay um at least when I was looking up the book but yeah I, if it is I I really want to I, I would really want to read the whole series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I saved my favorite one for last. This is The Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter by Aaron Reynolds. Rex really, really, really wants a pet, but his parents don't think he's responsible enough. But on his 11th birthday, they give him a practice pet, a rooster of all things. So he takes the rooster to the pet store to get him some food and supplies. And he takes along his best friend, Darvish. Darvish is such a loyal friend. No matter what kind of things Rex does, Darvish sticks by him. Well, unfortunately, right outside the pet store, there's a, a carnival game, the Grim Reaper. And Rex gets distracted by that because he just wants to know what the Grim Reaper would say to him. And while he's doing that, the rooster gets run over by a steamroller. So, so much for a practice pet. And also, Rex gets a little card from the Grim Reaper, and it, it has the strangest thing. It has something about dead animals, and oh, it's just very, very odd. Well, when he gets home, the rooster's there. And the rooster is, well, you can see, he's dead, but he's alive to Rex. And Darvish can't see him, but um, the rooster can move things. And so Darvish knows he's really there. And then other animals start appearing in Rex's room. Dead animals, of course, an elephant and some others. And they're all from the zoo. And it's up to Rex to solve their murders because they didn't die naturally. And he has a high opinion of himself, as I mentioned before, and that adds a lot to the humor of this book. It's kind of over the top, but what else would you expect from the author of Creepy Carrots? <laughs> and goodness knows, we need some humor in these times. So this is The Incredibly Dead Pets of Rex Dexter by Aaron Reynolds. And I really, really liked this one. 
Oh, that's so cool. I love Creepy Carrots. It's one of my favorite books. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Oh, it kind of reminds me of the book. I think I talked to you about it, um, Belly Up. Oh, yes. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like pr trying to find that, mis or solve that mystery. Yeah. And everything like that. And oh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Oh, sorry. There. And that one has a great cover, too. Oh, yeah. The Definitely. belly up. I know. Hippo. <laughs> the hippo, like upside down. I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to highlight this book. Oh, I love that cover. I know. It's actually shiny in the, the wording and everything and certain highlights in the actual um, cover or in the, the illustration. <clears throat> so I wanted to highlight this one. Obviously, you can tell by the cover, it looks kind of interesting and spooky in a way mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is warren the 13th this is actually a series and this is the third in the series i was going to bring the other two to kind of show um but unfortunately we don't have it here oh. in the actual location i know but um it's pretty popular so those who are watching you'll most likely uh be able to identify and notice any of the uh, it looks really familiar it has the black spine and everything with the color with the color uh, title so as you can see we recently got this in june it's in our children's fiction collection so what it is about so at least i'll i'll give you the brief summary of the um, the series this is warren and he in like the first book i believe he was he inherited his family's hotel and unfortunately, he, is, he has to be the busboy, he has to be the valet, he has to be the manager, <laughs> he has to be everything, basically. He has to wear all the hats. So, um, through the first two books, he kind of discovers new things about the hotel, and it's pretty mystical. Uh, it's, uh, it can... It actually can transport tourists or guests to specific uh, locations in the world, to different countries. It's kind of like Howl's Moving Castle, I believe. That, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Um, there's, another, there's another show, I think, also, where the castle actually transports to different um, locations. But anyways, this book... He actually, uh, the hotel actually turns into a floating hotel. And as you Ooh, can see, cool. yeah, you can, uh, and when I mean floating, I believe they think they believe, um, it floats on the water. And that's why you can see he has an octopus friend named Sketchy. <laughs> and as you can see, he looks like he's in scuba diving gear as well. So the illustrations are pretty interesting. The text, I think, is interesting as well. It's not like oh. a traditional. It kind of looks more like a uh, like a tour guide-ish type, you know, more mm -hmm. informative type brochure pamphlet in a way. Um, a lot of it is like sketch art. It's pretty cool. And I think that's kind of funny because their his octopus friend is named Sketchy. <laughs> so in this book, he is trying to work on the floating hotel, but also later on his friend sketchy gets kidnapped oh. and so he has to go on this crazy mysterious journey and try to solve who kidnapped him where he where he can find him and bring him back so it's kind of a suspense uh, adventure story um, with plenty of illustrations as you can see oh cool yeah pretty full full length illustrations but every spread practically has a little bit of an illustration so it's pretty fun it gives uh more more to the imagination so i think it's pretty interesting yeah so that's warren the 13th oh and it's by i'm sorry warren the 13th and the 13 year curse i believe 13 is a big thing for this little guy because he's actually 12 and he's going to have his 13th birthday soon so, uh oh. Yeah, I know. 13, 13, 13. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. All righty. So, okay. that was all five of our books, or five each, 10 total, 10 books. <laughs> um, but yeah. 
Yeah, and we hope that you enjoyed them. You can request them from the library, get them through that um, contactless pickup that we encourage you to use. And you, if you're looking in the catalog, you look under chapter chat 1020. So each of our chapter chats, it will say chapter chat and we'll have that month. So this is 1020 and we will tag our books in there so you don't have to remember or write down the titles as we're talking. You can just enjoy the books. And we hope that you um, continue to stay safe and healthy. And we will see you next month. Yep. See you all next month. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>